join here. They say university makes students, here students make university. So with the slogan of Think Big, I, Himanshu Kaushik, your host of the day, would like to welcome you all in today's webinar on orthopedic manual skills for physiotherapists, healing hands. And I hope that you all are doing fine, safe, sound, happy, and heal at wherever you're taking this webinar from. So before we move on and learn a lot more about the session in physiotherapy today through our expert, we have our expert here with us. So I shall introduce you to our expert. We have Dr. Varun Kalia, an assistant professor in Department of Physiotherapy, School of Physiotherapy and Paramedical Sciences, lovely professional university here with us. He is a magnetic personality who aspires to excel in practice, education, and research of physical therapy and has an experience of 10 plus years in various institutions and clinics. He has accomplished various achievements by doing several online courses and has been a part of various seminars and conferences of national and international repute. He also has lifetime membership of Indian Association of Physiotherapy and has got several awards like Emerging Research Scholar Award, etc. So, sir, it is a pleasure for us to be here, to be able to listen to you in the webinar. And with this, I request you to kindly take over the screen, sir, over to you and looking forward for an amazing session. Uh, thank you, ma'am. First of all, I uh, want to welcome all the participants of today's lecture. And uh, along with that, I also uh, would like to thank Ms. Himanshi Gaushik as well as the Division of Admission for the, giving me this opportunity to take uh, this session and uh, to share my knowledge with all of you. So let's start with our today's lecture. Okay, so uh, the time when we will, yeah, we are just playing our plus two or the 12th with the PCB, physics, chemistry, as well as the biology. So it's very important for all the students to choose for the next uh, uh, course so that we can excel in our remaining life uh, in the uh, future. So we are having lots of options, lots of opportunities, but it's very difficult to choose the best one. So here we will discuss, first of all, some of the opportunities that we are having after plus two. So here, the first one is the MBBS. So most of our students uh, want to do the MBBS, but it's uh, sometimes very difficult to crack the entrance exam for a few of the students. But uh, uh, the students who can achieve this MBBS admission, who can got ad admission in the MBBS, so it's very good. But otherwise we are having the other opportunities also like we are also having the bachelor in the dental surgery means bds as well as we are also having bachelor of ayurvedic medicine and surgery means bams as well as the bachelor in the pharmacy as well as bachelor of vocational training as well as we are also having bachelor of vocational training in mlt as well as we are also having the bachelor of physiotherapy and we are having the Bachelor of Veterinary Science, and we are also having the Bachelor of Optometry, as well as the Bachelor of Nursing. So all these branches are very good, but today we will discuss about the Bachelor of Physiotherapy. So what are the benefits to take admission in the Bachelor of Physiotherapy? So as you all know, I'm from the background of physiotherapy. I have done my Bachelor, Master, as well as the PhD from the Lovely Professional University so I'm connected with this university from the last uh, 15 or 14 to 15 years or more than that. So uh, that's why we today we will discuss about the Bachelor of Physiotherapy as well as the Master of Physiotherapy. So in the Bachelor of Physiotherapy, actually, we are having a course of four and a half years. So in that four of half year, actually, we are studying a lot related to the MBBS studies, means we are studying about the anatomy, about the physiology, about the bio mechanics about the biochemistry, microbiology, medicine, surgery. So all the uh, subjects which are students are studying in the MBBS as well as the dental surgery. So in the Bachelor of Physiotherapy also we are studying those subjects. So along with those subjects, actually we are having some different subjects related to the exercise therapy, related to the electrotherapy, 
related to the biomechanics as well as the other lots of the subjects which are just useful for the exercises as well as to treat as well as to diagnose the conditions related to the neurology related to the orthopedics related to the sports injuries related to the cardiopulmonary related to the gynecology so that's why we are we can say we are studying overall everything in the bachelor of physiotherapy not only a one set room so today uh, we will discuss about the manual therapy so in the manual therapy so what is this manual therapy actually so most of the physiotherapists are using their hands to treat the patient so that's why we are saying we are having the healing hands so manual therapy is a clinical approach based on the skilled hands on therapy to decrease pain and improve the mobility of joint soft tissue and nerves so as we all know when some person will uh, is just getting the injury so after the injury so it's very difficult for the patient to move the joints as well as to move from one place to another place so at that time so most of the patients are seeking help from the physiotherapists so in all the hospitals settings as well as in the education field also the physiotherapists are having a very important role to play so that's why we are saying that we are having the healing hands because with our manual techniques with our manual skills only we are able to decrease the pain of the patient we are able to make them to walk from one place to another place we are able to even make them stand in case of paralysis conditions also so if some person will get any stroke injury or in any uh, nerve injury so it's very difficult for the patients to even stand for a longer duration on their own feet but uh, physiotherapists are able we, we are able to make them stand within a few days to weeks or months so that's why we are having the magical hands as well as we can say we are having the healing hands so under the manual therapy of the orthopedic uh, stream we are we can divide it into two branches those are two categories the first of all we can discuss about the basic manual therapy techniques so under the basic manual therapy techniques we are having different approaches but here we are having a less time so that's why we will just discuss uh, about the few of the approaches like the muscle stretching technique as well as the manual strengthening technique range of motion exercise technique as well as the massage therapy technique so on the another hand we are also having the advanced manual therapy technique so under this technique actually we can to use either the midline mobilization mulligan mobilization carlton bond mobilization mechanical diagnosis and therapy also known as the mckenzy technique along with that we are also having the dry needling therapy manipulation therapy as well as the cdx so we will discuss all about all these techniques one by one so i will share few of the points with you all related to these techniques the first one about the stretching so here we are having three different type of the stretching the first one is the static stretching then we are having the dynamic stretching as well as the pre contraction stretching so again we can divide the static stretching into two types active stretching as well as the passive stretching passive stretching means patient will stretch the individual muscle or the group of muscles by himself or herself or with the help of some other partner but in case of active stretching so here it's a self stretching only means patient will self actively stretch their own muscles so that is the active stretching me here in this case we can say that in case of passive stretching so this technique will be applied by the physiotherapist on the body of the patient to stretch some of the muscles but in case of active stretching patient will himself or herself will stretch their muscles so i will demonstrate for uh, one or two muscles only to how to stretch the muscles in with the active stretching as well as with the passive stretching also but on the another hand we are having the dynamic stretching technique also so here also again we are having two types uh, active stretch as well as the ballistic stretch so dynamic stretching means with movement dynamic means with movement so with the movement when person will try to stretch the muscle so that is known as the active stretching and ballistic stretching means just with a sudden stretch so we have to apply a quick as well as the sudden stretch of the muscle so that is the ballistic stretching 
So the last one that is the pre-contraction stretching. So that is the PNF technique as well as the other techniques like the muscle energy technique. So all these techniques are the stretching technique. Muscle energy technique is also known as a magical technique because with this technique, actually we can uh, increase the range of the joint within a few seconds to minutes. It will not take even a one session of the physiotherapy or the two session of the physiotherapy with the one or two sessions on with the one or two minutes or the three minutes only we can gain a new range of the joint so i will uh, demonstrate uh, all these techniques one by one so So here I'm having a model with me. Sir, hello. Yeah, sir, just one request. Um, if we are presenting uh, this thing, right, uh, can we join in from any other account? Uh, to just make a video? No issue, sir. Sir, but do one thing, no, sir. Um, kindly, uh, just remove the background so that like you're visible completely because you've been equipped with the background and and you're not visible on the screen, sir. Okay. Yeah, sir. So there. Uh, just a moment. Plus nearby the axilla, uh, we are having uh, some of the lymph nodes. Sir. So we have to drain the lymph in those lymph nodes. So that's why. We have to start from the distal region. So we will just place our one hand over the distal region of the patient and then we will move it toward the elbow joint. Otherwise, we can also move it toward the axilla. So that is the effluda. But uh, in that condition, actually, the area must be uncovered. Okay, without uncovering, actually, it's not possible to perform the effluda or any technique uh, related to the massage. Okay, so similar way in the stroking also, we have to stroke the body part like this. Okay, so it will stimulate the, um, jo, it will stimulate the uh, sensory me uh, mechanism actually. So it will increase the flow of the fluid inside the skin. So it will also help us to drain the lymphatic system or lymph into the lymphatic system. So all the techniques like the patricides, kneading, ringing, skills rolling, so all these techniques actually will help us to just drain the lymph into the lymphatic system so that it will reduce the swelling. So against uh, uh, the reduction in the swelling, uh, we are also having some of the another benefits like uh, it will also reduce the muscle tension. It will improve the circulation. It will also stimulate the lymphatic system. It will also reduce the stress hormones. It will induce the relaxation in the body of the patient. So it will also increase the joint mobility as well as it will increase the flexibility of the joint. So it will also increase the or improve the skin tone. It will also improve the recovery of the soft tissue injury. So when the person is having some injury or history of the injury, so in that case also we are we have to apply the therapeutic massage so that it will increase the healing. It will reduce the healing time actually. Suppose uh, without uh, massage, if someone will heal the injury within 15 days, might be if we will apply the massage therapy, so injury will heal within uh, 7 to 10 days. So it will reduce the healing time. So next one is the Maitland mobilization. So now we are just going to discuss about the advanced uh, therapies. So here, the first one is the Maitland mobilization. So here we are having a lots of uh, different types of the glides. The first one is the anterior posterior glide. Second one is the posterior anterior glide, then longitudinal caudal glide, longitudinal spallet glide, joint distraction, middle glide, lateral glide. So all these types of the glides actually we are using to mobilize the joint. So when we have to use this technique, when some person is having some stiffness in the joint, so patients are not able to completely gain the range of motion means someone is having the history of the injury in the shoulder joint 
and if i will ask the person to move your shoulder in a complete range of motion so it's not possible for the patient to gain the last range of motion of the shoulder joint so to increase that range of motion of the shoulder joint actually we can use this magical technique so when we will use any glide to increase the range of motion of the joint so it will open up the adhesion so it will break the adhesion of the joint and patient can easily gain the deficit range of motion of the joint so here we are having uh, some of the uh, grades the first grade so the first grade represents the movement or we can say the application of the glide in the starting of the range of the joint so small amplitude rhythmic as movement within the initial range of the joint so that is known as the grade one so you can see here with it's represented with a very small arrow means in the starting range of the joint only so the second grade is the large amplitude again the rhythmic oscillation but it will be at the available range of motion not in the initial range but it will be at the available range of motion again the grade three it's again the large amplitude rhythmic as uh, oscillation and it will just enter into the resistance joint resistance offered by the joint and the last one fourth grade again the small amplitude rhythmic oscillation at the just anatomical limit so when we will try to cross the anatomical limit so it can lead to the uh, dislocation of the joint so during the application of the midline mobilization we need to stop at the anatomical limit we have not to just cross that limit so when we have to apply these grades one and two grade we can apply to reduce the pain so both some person will come to us in the opd with the uh, very severe pain in the first on the first day so at that time if we will ask the person to move the joint so it's not possible for the patient because of the pain so at that time we have to apply grade 1 as well as the grade 2 so that we can reduce the pain of the patient so next day when again patient will come to us so at that time we will ask the patient about the status of the pain so now if the patient is having a very less amount of the pain so then we can apply the grade 3 or the grade 4 to increase the range of motion so on the second day onwards actually we can increase the range of motion of the joint so that's why within a few days only we can achieve a complete range of motion of the affected joint with the help of midline mobilization so second technique under the advanced therapy so it's a mulligan mobilization so mulligan proposed that mulligan means it's a name of scientist who discovered this technique so mulligan proposed that injuries of the sprains might result in a minor a uh, problem or the postural fault to a joint causing a restriction in the physiological movement means if someone will just uh, uh, got injury over the shoulder joint so at that time when the shoulder will just get hit by something some object so might be it will just move the shoulder joint into some faulty position so the in the central when the head of the humerus is present in the center of the glenoid cavity so that is the correct position for the shoulder but if that head of the humerus will just shift slightly from the original position so that is the faulty position so with the help of this mulligan mobilization actually we can again move the joint at its normal position at its original position so when the joint will be at the original position at that time only patient will be able to move it completely inside the another bone without any restriction as well as without any pain so with the help of mulligan mobilization we can achieve that so the techniques have been developed to overcome joint cracking problems or the positional fault that is a joint with subtle biomechanical changes so what is biomechanics so when the person is moving something means moving the joint so at that time how the joint will move inside the another bone or the socket so that is the biomechanics so when the joint is not moving properly that means person is having some biomechanical fault or the biomechanical changes 
so with the help of molecular mobilization actually we have to treat the biomechanical changes of the patient so here we are having a different types of the glide the first one is the sustained natural apophyseal glide that is also known as the snags second one is the natural apophyseal glide that is known as the nags then we are having the peripheral movement with the mobilization the last one is the spinal mobilization with the limb movement so one by one i will uh, demonstrate all these techniques eh? Okay, so first one is the natural apophyseal glide, means the neck. So when we have to perform the neck, so at that time, patient will be in the sitting position. And then therapist will just stand on the side of the patient. And with our one hand, actually, we have to stabilize the head of the patient. And with our little finger, we have to place it over the defective area or the defective area. Suppose this person is having a defect in the cervical fourth vertebra. So I will place my little finger over the spinous process of the C4 vertebra and with the another hand thumb, I will just give a glide, natural glide. So you can see, I'm just doing this movement, it means a posterior anterior glide I'm giving, posterior to anterior side with my thumb, this hand thumb, like this. So I will place my thumb just over my little finger like this and then I will give the glide to, from the posterior to anterior side. So this is the natural apophyseal glide. And when we have to give the sustained natural apophyseal glide, so in that case, again, the patient will be in the comfortable position, sitting position or in the standing position. And then therapist will just stand behind the patient. So here we have to again find out the defective level of the vertebra. Again, we will ask the person to just see at the front uh, straight and then we will place a thumb over the spinous process of the vertebra then we will just place our fingers toward the eyeball of the patient and then we will just provide a movement anterior movement over the spinous process with our thumb and then we will ask the person to move your head downside again and then move toward the upper side Yes. When the person will move his or her head toward, toward the downside, so our finger must follow the movement of the head. Means that our finger must follow the movement of the eyeball. So when the person head will move up, so at that time also our fingers must follow the movement of the eyeball. And here the most important thing, our force must be continuous. Here I'm not doing this movement that I already done in the neck. So here I need to just maintain a one single force continuously. When the person will come back at the starting, then only I can remove my force. So this is the position. So with this position only, I can apply the glide. So next one is the peripheral movement with mobilization. So here, person will be in the so here the person will be in the comfortable position again. Suppose I need to give a glide for the shoulders joint. So I will ask the person to just lie down on the edge of the couch. And I will use a belt, a mulligan belt. So I will tie that belt just nearby the shoulder. And then with my foot, actually, I will hold it and then I will give a glide to the downside. And then I will ask the person to move the shoulder joint on the posterior side as well as the anterior side. Means lateral rotation as well as the medial rotation. So that is known as the peripheral movement with the mobilization. The last one that is the spinal mobilization with the limb movement. So for this last technique, 
again the patient will be in the comfortable position sitting position so therapist will just stand behind the patient and then i will ask the person to just sit that way and i will give a an posterior anterior glide over the defective area means suppose the patient is having the problem in the c4 c5 vertebra then i will give a glide and the posterior anterior glide over the c5 vertebra at the same time i will ask the person to move your shoulder toward the abduction okay so how much possible for the patient so patient will take it up to that limit i will not ask the patient to cross the pain limit okay so i will just maintain the posterior anterior glide and patient will just make the movement of the upper limb so in a similar way if i need to just keep the glide to the lumbar region so i will ask the person to stand or uh, uh, just uh, sit over the chair at which we are not having the back support then i will just give the glide to the lumbar region and i will ask the person to move the hip joint toward the abduction as well as the adduction movement so this technique is known as the mulligan mobilization okay so next one is the carlton bond mobilization so carlton bond is also known as the sustained translatory joint play technique sustained means we have to maintain that position of the joint when we have to apply the carlton bond so here actually we have to give a continuous low amplitude rhythmic oscillations along with the glide so here we are having three glides or the grades the grade one is the loosening grade two is the tightening grade three is the stretching so grade one mean loo means loosening loosening means actually we will not even start the stretching of the muscles not stretching even uh, we will not take up the loosen area of the muscle so just in the beginning suppose this is the range of the muscle means the, the size of the muscle so we will just try to in slightly increase the size of the muscle we will not even take it up to this limit so that is the grade 1 so along with this grade 1 we have to give a continuous low amplitude rhythmic oscillation and with the grade 2 means tightening so here in this case you can see we are having the slack zone as well as we are having the uh, tighten zone okay so here we have to taken up the slack means when the muscle is in the slack position so the muscle fibers are already in the slack position means the muscles is in the wrinkled form so we have to open up the wrinkle of the muscle with the grade 2 so that is the grade 2 is known as the tightening grade so the last one is the grade 3 grade 3 means now the muscle is already opened up so now it's a time to stretch it so that's why grade 3 is known as the stretching so i will just demonstrate either grade 1 or 2 or 3 all the grades are look like a same way okay so i will ask the person to just lie down so patient will be in the comfortable supine position suppose i need to give this glide for the shoulders joint then first of all i will check by pulling the shoulders joint ki how much range that patient is having suppose that patient is having a little bit of range of motion then the grade 1 if i will apply so i will just take a slack of the clothing only we can say okay clothing slack actually i will remove so it will offer a grade one to the patient but at the same time we have to give a rhythmic oscillation at low amplitude so like this we have to give the glide so this one is the grade one when we have to uh, use the grade two so at that time i will take up the wrinkles of the muscle okay so that is the grade two so i need to just increase a little bit force of from my side and then i will again give the rhythmic oscillation so that is the grade 2 and the grade 3 means a complete separation or we can say stretching of the muscle so with more force actually again i need to give the low amplitude 
rhythmic oscillation to the joint. So that is the grade three of the Carlton Bohr mobilization. So next one is the uh, McKenzie therapy or the McKenzie exercises system, also known as the uh, MDT. So MDT is commonly utilized to treat symptoms in the spine with the patient often experiencing symptoms in the extremities that originate from the spine. Means some patients are having the pain in the spinal level, means in the either the cervical region, in the thoracic region, in the lumbar region, and that pain is radiating either to the upper limb or to the lower limb, means to the arms or the legs. So at that time, we have to use the MDT or the McKenzie system so that we can centralize the pain. So our main goal here is to centralize the symptoms. Centralization means if patient is feeling a radiating pain toward the upper limb or the lower limb, then we have to treat that patient and that pain must move toward the spine only. Means we have to stop the radiation of the pain to the upper limb as well as the lower limb. So here in this MDT, actually we are having four major steps. The first one is the most important one, that is the assessment. So here we have to take the complete history from the patient about the symptoms. Also we have to perform some of the special tests, some of the investigations also we have to perform. And then we have to use the classification given by the McKenzie. Okay, so we will discuss the classification afterward. So after the classification only, we will be able to treat that patient because according to the classification only, we have to choose if what treatment actually we need to provide to the patient. So afterward, the last step is the prevention. Means according to the classification, we have to recommend some of the preventions to the patient. We have to educate the patient. If some of the activities patient must not perform. Okay, so next one is the classification. So here we are having four types of the classification. The first one is the derangement syndrome. Second one is the dysfunction syndrome. Then we are having a postural syndrome. Then we are having the non-mechanical syndrome. So derangement syndrome means if some patient is having some disc prolapse. So in that case, if we will ask the person to uh, just uh, stand and then we will ask the person to bend from the lumbar region forward, okay, for 10 times or 20 times. If patient will feel pain continuously from the first bend to the last bend, means patient is having a derangement syndrome, means patient is having some prolapse in the disc and patient will report increase in the pain. Okay, so if patient will report increased pain, that means that person is having a disc prolapse toward the anterior side. And on the other hand, if pain will reduce, that means that patient is having either the disc prolapse toward the posterior side or patient is not having the derangement syndrome. Okay, so if the patient will reduce the pain, patient will show the reduction in the symptoms, then we will ask the person to just perform the extension exercise. If patient will perform the extension exercises during the assessment and it will give the uh, increase in symptom. So obviously we will ask the person to perform the flexion exercise. So most of the, most of the time therapists are doing this mistake. Uh, we are just uh, recommending the extension exercises to the patient, but uh, those exercises are not useful for all the patients for all the times. So we have to choose the exercises according to the patient, according to the need, as well as according to the symptom of the patient. The second one is the dysfunction syndrome. Suppose some patients are having some tightness in the muscle, some tightness in the ligament, some tightness in the joint. So because of those tightness only, patients are uh, having the history of pain as well as the radiating pain. So in that case, when the person will perform some of the activities again and again for 10 to 20 times, Suppose patient is having the pain in the initial few times and then patient will report that now I'm not having any pain. That means that patient is having the dysfunction syndrome. So afterward, if pain will disappear, after doing some of the movements, repetitive movements means the 
Titan structure is already stretched. So when those Titan structures are, are already stretched, means it will not create any pain. So that's why those patients are coming under the dysfunction syndrome. For those patients, actually, we will recommend that you have to perform that particular activity, which will give you initially pain, but afterward that activity must be pain-free. So it will treat the patient. So according to the patient need, again, we have to choose the direction of the movement. Then the postural syndrome means because of the faulty posture, patients are having the pain. So such type of the patient will report that in the initial stage, patients are not having any pain, but patient will perform some of the activities in the sitting position for a longer duration. So after one hour or after two hours, patient will feel starting of the pain. That means that is just because of the postural syndrome. So after that we have to treat the posture of the patient. We have to ask the person not to sit for the longer duration. In between, you have to change your position. You have to change your posture as well as you have to start the strengthening exercises to make a good posture. So it will resolve the symptom of the patient. And the last category is the non-mechanical syndrome. So under this category, if patient is having uh, any spinal stenosis, hip disorder, sacroiliac joint disorder, low back pain because of the pregnancy. So such type of the conditions actually we have to treat differently. We can't use McKenzie in such type of the conditions. So for all those conditions, we are having a different type of the treatments. So next one is the dry needling therapy. So it's a very advanced as well as we can say magical technique. Within a second only, we can give relief to the patient from the pain. So it's also known as the trigger point dry needling. So it's an invasive procedure where the small acupuncture needed, actually we have to insert into the skin as well as the muscle where the patients are having the trigger points. So with the help of those needles, actually we have to target the trigger points. We have to break the trigger points. So when the trigger points will get ruptured, so it will produce the local twitch response, means it will open up immediately. And when we will remove the needle after two seconds or three seconds, when we will ask the person, what is the status of the pain now? At that time, patient will report, now I'm not having any pain. So that's why I'm saying it's a magical technique with a one or two seconds only, we can remove the symptoms, we can resolve the symptoms. So if the therapists are expert in doing this dry needling, it's a very, very, very useful, but we have to learn first of all, then only we have to apply. Otherwise it can produce a negative effect also in the patient's body. We can damage some of the nerves, we can damage some of the arteries, we can damage some of the ligaments if we don't know about the human body anatomy. So that's why anatomy knowledge is very much important to apply this dry needling technique. So the next one is the Um, sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. You're oh, sorry. In... Yeah, yeah. By mistake, uh, it was uh, mute. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to discuss about the joint manipulation. So joint manipulation is a type of the passive sudden thrust movement of the skeletal joint. So we already discussed about the Maitland mobilization. So the last grade of the Maitland was the fifth grade. So that grade is also known as the manipulative grade. So in that grade, actually, we have to manipulate the joint of the patient. Suppose some patients are ha having uh, some stiffness in the facet joint of the spine. So if we will ask the person to move the neck as well as the trunk, means uh, the chest as well as the lower, uh, lower trunk. So it's very painful for the patient as well as patients are not capable to gain complete range of motion. So in that case, we have to just give a manipulation so that we can open up the facet joints. And when the facet joints will become open, so patient will be able to easily gain complete range of motion without pain. 
So I will just uh, give you uh, one demo for the cervical joint. So how to give this uh, manipulation to the cervical spine. So here patient will be in the supine line position. So here patient will be in the supine line position. And I will just ask the person to maintain your head out of the couch. And then I will hold the head of the patient with my one hand. And then I will check toward which side patient is having the less movement of the neck. Suppose this side patient is having the less movement. Then I will stabilize the head of the patient with my non-dominant hand. And I will use my dominant hand to give the manipulation. So I will hold the chin of uh, this uh, cheek of the patient. And then I will just give a traction force toward the posterior side. And then I will take it to the last ring and I will give a quick thrust. Okay. So let's jump. Move down. Move down. So I don't think so, kid. Uh, it was heard uh, in this uh, online session, but uh, it was a click uh, sound produced when I gave the quick thrust. Uh, means the facet joint is suddenly opened up. So it's also a very good technique uh, to give relief to the patient in a just uh, seconds with one sitting only. We can increase the range of motion, restricted range of motion of the patient. So with this uh, different, different techniques, actually, uh, we can manipulate the joints for the whole body. It means for even a small joints of the finger also, we can manipulate thumb also, we can manipulate. So every joint actually we can manipulate with the help of this manipulation technique. So that's uh, all about uh, the uh, manual skills or the manual techniques. Uh, of the orthopedic uh, field. So now just I want to just uh, share some of the highlights of the physiotherapy department of the lovely professional university. So in our department, actually we are having undergraduate program, master program, as well as the PhD program related to the physiotherapy. So under the graduate program, actually we are having the bachelor in physiotherapy that is of uh, 4.5 years, as well as we are also having the lateral entry in the bachelor in physiotherapy. If we, I will talk about the master program, so here we are having the master in physiotherapy in different settings like the orthopedics, neurology, sports, cardiopulmonary. And if I will talk about the PhD program, so we are having again a PhD program for uh, different settings like the orthopedic, neurology, sports, cardiopulmonary. If someone wants to perform uh, or to do this PhD program in gynecology or in some any other uh, rehabilitative stream like the hand rehabilitation also, so that is also available in the a lovely professional university under the department of physiotherapy. So in our department, we are having uh, the students from almost 20 or more than 20 different countries. So you can see here, we are having the students from the Zimbabwe, Zemin, Tanzania, Syria, Sudan, Sri Lanka, and so other, so many other countries also. So if uh, uh, we will discuss about the alumni. So we are having some of the very renowned uh, alumni. So in this first image, you can see we are having the alumni of uh, like uh, Ishan Marwaha, who was the physiotherapist of the golden boy, Mr. Nira Chopra. And, and we are also having the alumni, Amreen Hayat. Uh, actually, she is the uh, physiotherapist for the Indian volleyball uh, team. And uh, she participated in the Asian Championship in 2022. And here we are having the Vikas Gautam. So he's the sports physiotherapist and he participated in the Commonwealth Games 2022. And here we are having the Shoban Babu Kambu. So he's also a sports physiotherapist and uh, he's with the team, national boxing team, uh, men's junior, and he participated in the 2021 championships. So another one we are having Dr. Feroz, Kamal Deep Singh, Dr. Surbhi Bhazdwai, Dr. Amit Chaturvedi. So all these alumni are also placed in very good uh, institutions like the World Health Organization, NHS, uh, Dignity Health, uh, Fisher and uh, Paikel uh, Healthcare. So 
if we will see the placement of our physical therapy department so we are having lots of placements okay so our alumni are placed in very good institutions so here i'm just going to highlight few of them the first one is the jocelyn and uh, then the obijit then the just joe then we are having the posima so all these are the alumni of the physical therapy departments uh, who are just placed in a very good institutions and they are getting very good package also so lpu Uh, is having a three OPDs, physical therapy OPDs, one inside the LPU campus, one we are having in the Fogwada, and one we are having in the Jalandhar city. And uh, we are having a tie-up with the total twenty-six hospitals for the practice purpose of our students. So seven hospitals are in the Fogwada, and eighteen hospitals we are having in the Jalandhar. And uh, uh, five days a week, actually, our students are visiting those hospitals, actually. and uh, to perform some of the practice in the opd in the icu and in the various departments of the multi speciality hospital so you can see we are having the tie ups of all these hospitals our physical therapy department not only concentrating on the education in the classrooms but even also we are also concentrating over the research work so we are having lots of uh, patents uh, published patents uh, as well as the uh, developed uh, modalities also so few of them uh, here we are having like the dt walk as well as the gati gati means uh, gait analysis through the insole so all these are the projects uh, done by our masters as well as the phd scholars so we are having some uh, tie ups with the copal surgical also okay so that is the approved center of the excellence so our department uh, time to time organizing some of the hands on training from the ex uh, industry experts also that is uh, uh, sometimes most of the time actually it's free of cost uh, so we are calling some of the ex uh, industry experts from the industry and those experts uh, are just uh, coming to the lpu and they are sharing their knowledge with our students and students are learning a lot with those uh, type of the workshops as well as the seminars or the webinars so uh, physical therapy department most of the time uh, offering uh, some of the free consultation camps uh, to the community and we are also participating in the blood donation camps uh, actually we are having some of the history means uh, we are already arranging some of the ergonomic awareness camps for the employees of the different different industries so such type of the activities actually most of the time we are doing so we are uh, having the Uh, some of the experts uh, like the dr shyan patman from the australia and uh, dr arun from the manipal dr yastin from the australia and so on we are having the most uh, renowned persons who are just used to to come here or to visit the lpu to share their knowledge with our uh, students so from the last uh, few years actually our physical therapy department published 271 or more than 271 of the indexed uh, papers and as the uh, web of science as well as the scopus uh, and 360 uh, citations actually till date we are having and we are having more than 41 iprs published till date and nine granted iprs actually we are having and uh, we are having the funded projects of uh, 913 lakhs and we are having a uh, 28 tie ups with the industries so here you can see we are having a huge amount of the grant project so that is almost about 8.5 crores and the name of that project is the spirit eu spirit so this project is also under the physiotherapy department actually we are working on this project also so in our department we are having so many sophisticated as well as the costly machines to perform some of the research work under the bpt also bachelor of physical therapy also master of physical therapy also as well as the for the phd work also so here we are having the emg ncb modalities vein track we are having spirometry we are having so we are having so many sophisticated microscope microscopes to perform some of the work with the micro uh, microbiology lab uh, biochemistry lab uh, ecg also we are having so many equipments actually we are having in our laboratories so you can see in this image so here we are having the wind track to assess the balance as well as the gait so the cost of this wind track is almost about more than 8 lakhs so such type of the equipments actually we are having in our lab we are having in our laboratories 
so so many uh, institution mous we also we are having a dustbox service department so you can see uh, with the postgol with the brazil with the cyprus with the sri lanka with the indonesia with the spain we are with the other countries also we are having a lots of mous so all these are the institutions uh, uh, with them also we are having the mous inside the india I mean most of the institutions are in the jalandhar as well as in the fogwara so that we can uh, send our students to participate uh, and to treat the patient to gain more and more knowledge from those hospitals so our students uh, most of the time actually uh, participating in on the different different days like the world heart day world biodiversity uh, day medical camps uh, women health day so all these days actually our department is celebrating from the starting so here we are having uh, lots of classrooms with the, the uh, projectors as well as the uh, acs equipped so laboratories also we are having more than 14 laboratories uh, which are fully equipped with the uh, very advanced equipments uh, we are having three funded projects under the department of physiotherapy so spirometry uh, lab we are having cardio stress test lab we are having so so many labs as well as the so many sophisticated equipments we are having in our department so you can see here this one is the electrotherapy lab this one is the anatomy lab where our students are doing the practice so this one is the neurology lab so these are the neurology lab as well as the uh, that uh, wind track uh, lab so this one is the cardiopulmonary lab so hematology lab we are having microbiology lab histopathology lab biochemistry lab so this one is the opd in the fogwara so this one is the opd in the lpu campus and this one is the jalandhar opd we are having and our students are doing the practice in all those opds also so we are having a central library as well as the departmental library so we are having a lots of or we consider a huge number of books available in our departmental library also so in our departmental library actually we are having the access for the various uh, uh, research uh, uh, engines uh, like the jgate springer mbase and so on so we can search the articles uh, with the help of those search engines actually we have no no need to pay anything uh, except uh, we can say out of the university so university is providing of all the facilities to perform the research work also So all these are the images of the uh, labs. Yes, thank you from my side. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, sir, for coming in, for giving in your time and for showing us all the practical aspect of how um, we can actually cure. And uh, we have been getting some responses in the chat box itself that um, Rinku says, uh, sir, knowledgeable session. And Sile says, sir, very nicely explained. And that is what I wanted to thank you, sir. Uh, the way you've explained is really, really appreciated. Thank you so much, sir, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, and sir, um, before we go on to our next part, I would like to request all the participants, if you have any question, any query, um, you can just post in the Q&A or chat box. And meanwhile, sir, we did get uh, quite a few queries. So with your permission, can I take them up? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please show. Um, so this first question came from Radha Sharma and it's, uh, it says, what is the appropriate time of doing these exercises? Actually, the appropriate time is uh, most of the time, actually, we have to perform any exercise when the person is having the time between the, uh, we can say, breakfast or the lunch means uh, when we have to take the uh, breakfast. So either we have to perform the exercises after two hours of the uh, breakfast or before the breakfast. So if the person is capable to perform any exercise without taking any food, so that yeah. is the very best uh, time to perform exercises. But sometimes the patients are uh, not able to perform the exercises without taking anything. So at that time, we can allow them to take the food. But afterward, we have to wait for the next two hours. Then afterward, only we can start with the exercises. So most of the time, actually, we have to recommend to perform the exercise in the morning time. But if we have to perform the exercise uh, two times a day, then we can ask the person to perform the exercise in the evening after two hours of the dinner. After two hours of the dinner? Yes. 
okay okay so thank you so much and uh, actually i was also listening i mean this was my question i mean i also wanted to know about this so i hope rather you must have got the answer of the query that you've written okay so this uh, question came from sahil sir how often we use hydrotherapy session for ms mass strengthening basically I'm sure. for ms Hold strengthening on. it is ms muscle strengthening muscle strength muscle strength okay Okay, so how often we use hydrotherapy session for muscle strengthening? Okay, uh, Sahil, actually, it's not like how often we have to use it. Actually, uh, for, according to me, actually, we have to use it just once a day because the strengthening exercises are enough if we will perform it once a day with a good amount. It means if we have to perform the strengthening for the lower thing, means for the quadricep or the hamstring, and if we will ask the person to perform those exercises 10 times with the three sets, so it's enough for the patient. And then we have to give the time to the muscles for the recovery also. So after even next day or even on the alternative days, we have to again start with the next session. So that is uh, very important for the muscle to recover. If we will train the muscle uh, very frequently, so it will not give us the beneficial effect. Even it will create more problem for the patient. It will create uh, more pain for the patient. It will, it will create uh, soreness for the patient. So patient will not be even uh, able to participate for the next session. So for the patients, actually, we have to use strengthening exercises for either the hydrotherapy or with the open weights or any type of the strengthening exercises once a day only. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Sahil, I hope uh, you have got the answer. I mean, you your query is resolved now. You can just type in the Q&A box if it is. And if, okay, yeah. So he, th he says, thanks, sir. Um, so with this, we have our last query from Viraha Sharma. And this query uh, says, are there any specific resources or courses for orthopedic manual skills to learn? Yes, we are having uh, some of the MOOC courses. Uh, so you can learn those MOOC courses online also, as well as uh, uh, in our field, we are having so many experts who are uh, uh, time to time conducting the workshops also so you can attend those workshops otherwise when you will uh, uh, join the master course so under the master course most of the techniques actually you will learn because in those two years actually we are providing a proper training to the students and we are pro providing a proper time also to practice all these techniques advanced therapy techniques actually so that's why if either you have to open your own clinic or you need to uh, go to the education field or to the teaching field. So you must join the masters. Then only you will gain a complete knowledge because in the BBT, actually you are able to just, uh, uh, able to just learn some superficial techniques, but you are not able to learn the depth of those techniques. But when you will enter in the master at that time, only you will just enter in the depth of the technique and you can gain a complete knowledge and you can provide a complete benefit to the patient. So it will give you more uh, uh, satisfaction also, as well as the monetary benefit also. Yeah, and I definitely agree because when you come in the university, you have uh, I mean, all the exposure of all the experts practically and physically, and you can perform things practically as sir has already shown how things will be done in the university. So I think you can come in here and you can join us. So, sir, I think with this, we're done with the questions. And I would like to request if anybody has any other question, you can post. Otherwise, um, sir, I would like uh, your, I mean, to take your permission to show them a little about the site as in where they can take the admission from. So, can I? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am, please, ma'am. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. So, now I will be just showing... Uh, the side part to all the students and the participants present here. So this is one short resolution to every query of the admission that is lpu.in. This will be the site. So once you um, just type this site in uh, your browser, this will be the interface that will be coming in front of you, right? And since we're catering about admissions, okay, so before I go to admissions, I'd like you to uh, notice one thing or I'd like to tell you something is once you click on this admissions part, 
we have a page of webinars like today you're attending this webinar we have several other webinars that are coming in so you need to go to the admissions and once you go to the admission we have lpu's edufair webinar page and once you click on that um, there will be a whole lot of webinars that are already planned so you can register for them um, in whichever uh, webinar you want to these are all free and you can gain knowledge as much as you want Okay, now coming back to the admission query. So simply you click on the admissions and once you click on the admissions, you have all the segregated programs um, after 12th, after graduation, after 10th, after post-graduation, etc. So let's take an example. You are a 12th pass out student and want to take an undergraduate program, right? So once you click on after 12th um, undergraduate programs, there are a whole lot of disciplines as you can see in here. You, you name any of the discipline and we have it here. You can see uh, computer science, engineering, geography, political science, fashion design, ma uh, applied medical science, law, management, any discipline you want, um, it, it is here in the LPU. So now since we uh, were talking a lot about physiotherapy today, why not take an example of the same? Okay, so uh, once I clicked on the physiotherapy, we have all the programs that are uh, available under that, under that particular discipline given to you. So here you can see BPT, Bachelors of Physiotherapy. And once you click on the program, these are the, uh, this is basically the interface that will be coming in front of you. And these are the options that you would be requiring to know every detail about that particular course. So um, just in the next one minute, I'll be briefing them all. So this program details gives you an idea of eligibility, whether you are eligible for a particular course or not. So you can see that uh, here eligibility, uh, you have to have at least 60% aggregate marks in your 10 plus 2. And with that, you need to qualify certain tests, that is LPU, NEST or CUET. So that is how you need to check your eligibility. Highlight option, as Sir has already given a good amount of uh, you know, knowledge about what all the department has, what all highlights, what all publications students are achieving under that particular course. So also you can find it here in the website. Now I will be directly moving to fee structure. So fee, uh, once you click on the fee, you will be shown this interface and this is a per semester fee. But again, um, you can see already you get up to 48% of program fee when you fall in these categories. Uh, so you need to check if you fall in that particular category or not. And hence you can avail the scholarship. Now is the important date I'd like to mention and it is 15th June last date of admission that is today only. So please... Uh, you know, start applying for the course because after that you might not be able to take admission in your favorite course. And how you can apply, simply click now, uh, click apply now. And there are some bare minimum requirements that you will be asked. And after that, you, you will be given your dashboard. And from there, you can simply apply for the course or the test. Now, I hope that I have given you a brief as to what is required, uh, you know, from you to take admission or to know about a particular course, any course you want. Okay, now, uh, and if, there, if there's anything you want to know, you can directly post in chat box or Q&A box, or you can directly schedule a call with us, uh, have, just WhatsApp us, or have a live video counseling session with us um, so that our counselors will be, uh, you know, uh, resolving your queries. Now, last but not the least are the numbers. You can just check it here. These are the numbers. You can take screenshot of it and, you know, uh, just call on them. Our counselors will be here and providing assistance as to what you need to do or the, resolving your queries, basically. So I hope uh, I have given you a basic idea as to how you can take admission. Now I would like to take permission uh, from all the attendees and, of course, our expert here to wrap this webinar up, sir. Can I? Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. First of all, thank you so much for coming in, for crediting your time, for your experience and giving us a live demo as to how things does, I mean, things happen in the university and the course specifically. And thank you so much to all the participants also for coming in, for joining in and putting up your questions. They're really, really appreciated. So uh, with this, I take your leave. Until next webinar, stay safe and stay healthy and kindly explore the site lpu.in and I promise you won't regret it. So thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.